In this video, I'm gonna show you recording audio in Reaper. Now I'm starting with a new project. Let's create a new track to record to. Double click over here and we'll name it Acoustic Guitar. Let's give it a color at the track menu, track color, set tracks to custom color, and we'll choose this green color right here. Now it looks like this. Now to set up our input, we'll go into record by hitting the record button, and we can see our input right here. It's set up on my audio interface into input two. Let's change it to where my microphones are plugged into. Here's mono. My interface has six inputs right here, but I want to record the acoustic guitar in stereo with two mics. So I'm going to choose stereo and five and six, because that's where the mics are plugged into on my computer audio interface. And now if the guitar player plays, we should hear it through the track. And we do. Now we want to set our recording level between about 18 and 12 dB, at least the average. Let's check it again. That looks pretty good. If it was too loud or too low, we would adjust the gain on our computer audio interface. So let's turn on the metronome right over here at the tempo we want to use, which we can set down here. And we can go into record by hitting the record button right here. And to hear it back, we'll turn off the metronome and play it from here. Now we should check out the monitoring modes in Reaper. Right up over here, this indicator shows us how we're monitoring our input. By default, if we right click it, we could see we're monitoring the input. If we turn this off and record again, we could still record our guitar, but we're not gonna hear it while we record it. We're not gonna monitor it in Reaper. Even though it's still recording. But we can hear it on playback. but we didn't monitor it while we were recording. Now the purpose of this mode is if you want to monitor directly from your interface using a lower latency mode. But usually we're going to want to monitor through Reaper. So by default, this mode is turned on. So we'll hear the audio while we record it. in addition to playing back. But there's one other mode we should know about. If we right click over here, we could also choose monitor input, tape auto style. And if we choose this, we're only gonna hear input when we're in record, or if we're stopped, but not if we're in play. So if we just hit play, and the guitar player plays along. We see level on the meters, but we don't hear it through our speakers. We're only gonna hear it when we're in record. 
So this is useful for punching. Let's say we recorded a part. Let's say we're happy with it. But we want to punch in from bar three to bar four. We just want to replay that bar. So if we choose monitor input, tape auto style, we're only going to hear the guitar or the input when we punch in. And we're going to punch in manually using the keyboard shortcut on PC. It's Control R, and on Mac, it's Command R. And we'll punch in at bar three and punch out at bar four. But we're only going to hear input or the live guitar during the section when we punch in. So we only monitored the input or the live guitar during the section right here. The rest of the time, we heard the playback of this part and this part. Now, if you notice, by default, Reaper created a new take for a punch. Here's the original performance, and here's the part we just punched in. And we can compare it just by choosing which take we want to hear. If you want to hear this one, or this one. And if we prefer this one, just select it, go to the item menu, under take, and choose crop to active take. That's going to remove the first take and just leave the second. And now we have our punch, which we can tweak by trimming this side into this side to create a crossfade, hold down shift to move that punch, and do the same on this side. Just trim it over and move our punch or crossfade. Because before and after our punches, Reaper's always recording. So we can always trim it back to see what's underneath or fix our punches. But let's say we don't want to create takes when we punch in. Let's delete this and this and trim it back. We can change the recording mode so our punches won't create takes. Go to Options, under New Recording that overlaps existing items, and change it from the default, which is going to create takes, to trims existing items behind new recording, or tape mode. This is still going to let us punch in, but it's not going to create a new take. Let's give it a shot. And once again, we'll punch in at bar three and out at bar four. And once again, we monitored the audio before the punch and after, and just heard the input or the live guitar during the punch. But Reaper didn't create a separate take, it just punched over the original performance. But we could also have Reaper do the punching for us. So let's undo this punch, and instead, let's go to the options menu and change the record mode from normal to time selection auto punch. And now we can auto punch with our hands free. Let's just create a time selection from bar three to four by dragging. And now it's going to automatically punch in this section. It's going to punch in at bar three and out at bar four. So we can go into record the whole time. We don't have to manually punch.
And like I said, it automatically punched at bar three to bar four. We didn't have to do it manually. But the one problem with this mode, we could only punch in and out once. But there's another mode where we could do as many punches as we want. Let's undo this again. And this time, go to the Options menu and choose Record Mode Auto Punch Selected Items. And this is going to punch based on the items we select. So we'll go to bar three right here, type S to split our item, do it again at bar four. And now we created a separate item to define our punches. But let's do it again at bar five. Split it here and here. And now we could select just the item from bar three to bar four. Hold on control on the PC or command on the Mac. Then also select this item. So now we could auto punch at bar three to four and do it again from bar five to bar six. So let's give it a shot. And just like that, we created two punches in these two different sections. We punched in at bar three and out at bar four, then back in at bar five and out at bar six. Now I should also mention, besides switching the record modes up here, we could also switch them down here on the record button. Just by right clicking, normal mode, time selection auto punch, or auto punch selected items. And also the mode that we're in changes what the record button looks like. When it's normal, it looks like this. Time selection auto punch looks like this. And auto punch selected items looks like this. So you can quickly see which mode we're in. So that's pretty much it. That's recording audio in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bingo boys, let's go. Oh!